in the UK, one thing they seem to be getting right is the vaccination programme, the biggest vaccination programme the country's ever known. And in the UK, first doses have been given to 26.85 million people. That's 51% of adults. So they've crossed that halfway mark in terms of the adult population. 95% of people over 65 years old have been vaccinated with one dose of the vaccines. It's either the Pfizer or the AstraZeneca vaccine being used here in the UK. And the UK reached another record as well, 711,156 vaccines given in a 24-hour period. That's just been achieved. So for the first time, more than 1% of the entire UK population was vaccinated in a single day. But remember that here in the UK, one of the ways they're doing that, as well as having put in place an amazing procurement system, is that they're extending the gap between the first and the second dose to up to 12 weeks, rather than the three or four weeks advised by the manufacturers of those two vaccines. And meanwhile, in Europe, the vaccinations are not going as well, and that's causing tension between the UK and the EU. Break it all down for us. What's going on there? Indeed. Well, remember, there's only global capacity for producing vaccines at around 3.5 billion, and there are 10 billion needed around the world. So closer to home, the UK and the EU are having ongoing diplomatic squabbles about vaccine supply. That's partly because the vaccines, depending on whose they are and where they're made, need to be exported or imported in and out of the UK and Europe. Uh, so far, the EU has performed much worse than the United Kingdom, which, of course, just left the EU in the nick of time uh, with with Brexit having been completed just around the time that the vaccinations were being acquired. And the EU has uh, at various times said that the AstraZeneca vaccine developed in the UK in Oxford was ineffective, ineffective in people over around 50 or 60. Then they started uh, pulling it from being given to their citizens because they said that it could cause blood clots. And now they're on again, wanting it back and saying that they will in fact stop exports from the EU where some of it is being manufactured if the UK doesn't allow exports from the UK into the EU. So far, so complicated. But really what we're looking at is diplomatic vaccine wars, the like of which both sides say they won't engage in and don't want to. And while this all unfolds, of course, parts of Europe are now going back into lockdown. What is the latest you can share on this? Yes, there are new lockdowns going on across Europe, and that is another uh, thing that the UK will be wanting to avoid. With this pushing ahead in the vaccinations, they're hoping to avoid the need for further lockdowns. Things are very slowly being started, uh, started to be loosened here in terms of restrictions. But in Europe, France now has 21 million people affected by new lockdown measures, including in the capital Paris. And in Poland, a new three-week lockdown is in place. Italy has new restrictions with shops, restaurants and schools closed again in 20 regions, including Rome and Milan, and more than half the country is affected by that. And Germany also says that in due course, if it needs to, it will put new restrictions in place in some regions.